What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about how to find your true calling. And this is an exciting topic for me because I think it's one of the absolute most important things to accomplish in a lifetime. I mean, your calling is literally what you're meant to do on earth. And I want to differentiate between a purpose and a calling before I really get into it. So there's actually three components to this, the purpose, the calling, and the role. It's almost like the calling is a chime in your head, like this is what I'm supposed to do. And the role is you fulfilling that. And fulfilling every role within your lifetime contributes to your overall purpose. So the calling sits outside of the purpose in the multiple roles. And the calling is really pointing you to each role as life goes on. I hope that's a pretty straightforward way to explain what a calling is. So a lot of the time people are like, find your purpose, find your purpose. And that's really broad because your purpose is to fulfill one role today and another role a couple months from now or years from now even. So finding your purpose obviously is important too, but it's an overarching theme, whereas the calling is directing you to a role at a specific point in your time in your lifetime and in this video not only am i going to break down what is a calling and you know the components to a calling the characteristics of it but i'm also going to be explaining two routes to find your calling and mind you this video is about how to find it not how to act in it how to live in it that's a whole different topic and probably something i can't really tell you because i'm not you and if it's your calling it's especially you but ultimately, this is just a starting point. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then just keep on watching. So the characteristics of a calling. First of all, something you're passionate about. Well, most of us know what a passion is, but even if you don't, I'm just going to give you a couple of specific things that you will know about a thing to make sure that it's your passion. First being that you love to do it. It's something that you love to do. And second, that it's something you would do for someone else for free. For example, I personally, unless it was like a gift for someone I loved, I wouldn't paint a picture for someone for free. Like someone asked me, hey, can you make me a painting? I'd be like, how much you pay me, <laughs> you know? But I love painting. I mean, I truly do love to do it. It's something I enjoy doing with my time. But if someone asked me for a painting, I would be like, baby, no. And a lot of the time people think that your calling would stop at that. It's just something that you're passionate about but there are some levels of depth to it. So I think that the passion is really like your body's satisfaction. And then the second level is that it's a challenge to you. It's something that's challenging and that's a challenge to your mind. So first of all, it's gonna cause you to grow. It's gonna stretch you. It's gonna cause you to expand, to become a better version of yourself. If doing something doesn't really cause you to become a better version of yourself, it's probably not what you're called to do. And second off of the challenging part is that it serves other people more than it serves you. It forces you to be selfless. It forces you to be empathetic. It forces you to be compassionate and think about other people and what other people need. I used to be a personal stylist. And if you know me, you probably know that I used to style people and it became my full-time job, but it was not challenging at all. Like, it was almost like I was really good at it. I'm not bragging, I'm just being quite honest with you. I was so good at it because I had a job as a, a virtual stylist with the company and my manager was always praising me. I was getting a lot of accolades. I was getting a lot of um, leadership roles and things within my position within months of starting the job. And I was good at it, but there was no challenge whatsoever. Like. I was annoyed doing it. I was bored after a while. It was just a full passion of mine, but there was no challenging aspect to it. And it was serving me more than anyone else because I just like styling. But from my perspective and the way that I was approaching it, it wasn't really benefiting them as much as it was me. And third is on a spiritual level, it is a burden to you. It is, it is burdensome. It's something that pains you on a spiritual level and something that you could see a possible solution to, something that you think you might be able to step in and help out with. This is gonna be the thing that never changes, no matter what role you're playing, no matter what you're called to do at a specific point in your life. If what you're doing pertains to this one same burden that you're dedicating your life to, 
that's pretty much going to be a determining factor of whether it is just something you like to do and you can make a job out of or if it's something that is truly your calling at the time as it pertains to your purpose. Okay, so we've gotten that out of the way. Now I want to go ahead and get into the two routes that you can take to find your calling. One of them is basically a shortcut. It's a straightforward route to the calling and it is the easiest possible way that you could ever find out something so important ever. When you take this route to your calling, you don't have to know your passions yet. You don't have to know what challenges you get. You don't even have to know your purpose yet. You just are handed the calling and now you have the opportunity to grow into your passion and learn it and to grow into the challenges and figure out how to navigate them, to grow into the burden and figure out where that sits in your heart and how you can play a role in it. The reason that this is an approach to finding your calling that a lot of people aren't going to like is because it is spiritual. It relates to God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. Why am I apologizing for it? I'm not sorry. It's the truth. I just know that it's going to make some people uncomfortable. And if you want to skip ahead to the second explanation of how to find your calling, go ahead. But I feel like this is the good stuff right here. This is the meat and potatoes, you feel me? So the thing about it, you have to ask yourself, if this is a calling, who is calling me? Do you just call yourself? Do you ever dial your own phone number and pick up the same phone that you dialed from? Is that even possible? You're not calling yourself. You're only answering the call. And truth be told, if you're trying to fulfill your calling, then chances are you have a heart to serve people. And if you have a heart to serve people, that means that you have a heart to serve God, naturally. You just maybe might be resistant to it as of right now, and that's okay. Well, the thing about it is God is your creator. God assigned you your calling. And the way that you can find out from him is by asking him. That's all it takes. But... There is a route to access answers from God. You're not gonna hear from God unless you believe that his son is Jesus. And Jesus died for your sins and rose again to redeem us. And you know, all that good stuff. I, I don't wanna get into, the, <laughs> I'm not trying to evangelize right now, but I have to keep it 100%. Salvation is the route to finding your calling from God. And it's not scary. It's actually one of the most peaceful things you can do. It's one of the most rewarding decisions you could ever make. And God is going to throw you a party the day that you decide to give your life to him. Now, I gave my life to Christ about two years ago, less than two years ago. And he, you know, I did a fast and I asked him like, God, what, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. And he actually told me straightforward while I was fasting, I was praying and he showed me a vision and it was the words, like what I saw was a phone, like the buttons on a phone, and I saw the words of exactly what he had called me to do at that point in time. And he's given me different roles before fulfilling that specific calling. Like the calling that he gave me on that day is something that I still have yet to do. But he has also called me to different things on the way there because when you get your calling from God, you're starting from finding out the calling and then filling in the blanks that I already explained to you, the passions, the challenge, the burden. So when he would tell you your calling, and by the way, I know he doesn't speak to everyone the same way. I did see it, but he might, he might whisper it in your ear, or he might tell you through another person, or you might be reading the Bible and suddenly it clicks, or I don't know, it, it could come in a thousand million. God speaks in every single way possible. And... When you find out your calling, it might be unexpected to you, or maybe that one won't be unexpected or you won't really care. Be like, okay, if that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. Cause that's kind of what I, what I felt when he gave me that calling, when he assigned me that role. But along my walk with him, he's given me different roles that I have been very resistant to. I've been very surprised by them. Like there was one thing where I told him, I was like, there's absolutely no way you want me to do this. So like, <laughs> there are really some, but, Ultimately, it's because of the challenges and the burden that comes with it that it's hard for us to see the underlying passion related to this and how we can actually enjoy it. And so when you go to God, he's almost going to expedite the process of pushing through the challenges and reaching a further, a more distant calling in a shorter period of time. Like, for example, the thing that he told me on that day, I would not have come to that conclusion for a decade, I promise, <laughs> until 
you know, going through enough different roles that I did enough trial and error to realize that actually I think I like this thing more. Actually, I think this is more purposeful for me. It would have taken me forever. And even the things that he's told me to do in between then are things that I wouldn't have chosen to do at all. <laughs> and uh, they've all been extremely transformative for me. Because the thing about it is we as humans, we want to expedite our process to getting the reward, like getting a lot of money or getting respect and accolades or whatever from what we're doing that we want to skip ahead to the version of our calling or the specific role that's going to give us something back very quickly. But God takes us along the route that gives us internal spiritual and mental transformation and growth to the point that we don't even really care about the physical things anymore. And when we get them, it's just like, oh, this is just icing on the cake. I was already joyful. I was already feeling blessed and completely fulfilled. And now this is on top of it. But understand that whatever is standing between you and your calling has to go. And this is a lot of what the manifestation law of attraction types of approaches to life seem to consider is that you really have to shift your whole mindset and bring yourself into the mental state of being in that place before you get there. And God actually takes us through that process because it's way easier said than done. People are just like, law of attraction, just think it, be it, and then you'll see it. But you can only sustain that for a second without actually breaking those cycles and patterns in your mind that are preventing you from maintaining the mental state to receive that thing. And so God actually helps you break down, break through all of the mental cycles and all of the patterns that are preventing you from stepping into anything. But your heart has to be in the right place. You have to be willing to stretch yourself to find comfort and discomfort, to find peace and chaos. You have to be diligent. You have to trust God. And if you don't want to do any of that, there's another option, as I've mentioned. There's another approach, but there's no guarantee you're going to figure it out before you die. But it's still going to be helpful. What I'm about to give you is a breakdown, a way to break down a list and narrow down what your calling is right now. And it'll help you figure it out. Surely it'll help you. I just don't know how, like, I don't know if it's 100% effective, but I know it's going to help because I believe that if I did this, even before coming to God, did this breakdown list, I would have my calling as one of my options. Let me backtrack too. Before I give you the list and the way to break down the list, I do want to say you have to pull yourself out of the societal box of what people will think and people will say, this is what it looks like to be it, or this type of person does this thing, or I'm not good enough, or they wouldn't. You know, just take yourself out of the lens of society, the lens of social identities and anything like that. Take yourself out of any type of limitation that does not come from just merely being a human. Like, you're not gonna be able to be a bird or a banana for your calling, you know what I mean? Other than those types of things, just be open to all of the careers or all of the roles. It doesn't even have to be a career. Just keep that in mind. Be open, okay? So the scenic route, starting with the list. You write down every single thing you love to do, all of them. I love cleaning in the mornings. I love to walk my dog. I love poetry, reading poetry, writing poetry. If you don't have 50 things on the list, you're cheating yourself because your passion can be anywhere in your calling or in your purpose. You have to make an exhaustive list. It's possibly the thing that you didn't think you would ever build your life on or around. Any little thing that you love, write it down, okay? Now of those things, which ones would you do for someone else for free? And I'm not talking about like your spouse or your children or your you know, nearest, dearest loved ones, but just like any old guy, gal, person. If you love vacuuming so much that you would just do it for your neighbors, all of them, every week, you know, and it wouldn't bother you because it's therapeutic for you, that would be one. So now we're going to narrow it down by the challenge. Which of these things would you do for a living? Meaning you would do this consistently 
and this would be your exchange for how you eat, how you drink water, how you keep a roof over your head, how you keep gas in your tank. Which thing would you trade your life for? That's basically what I mean. Like you can do this thing as often as it takes that it would keep you alive. And in anything, to do something as often as it takes to keep you alive, there should be a challenge regarding that. And the challenge is either in the fact that it's that hard to do it enough that you can sustain your life off of it, or it is something that serves other people more than it serves you. And something that serves others more than it serves you is personal to you, right? I just want to make that very clear because you can't just say that any specific job serves the recipient of it more than the person doing the job across the board sometimes someone who does a specific job like i've mentioned before i'm not saying that personal shoppers or personal stylists are selfish in their work i'm just saying that for me personally the way that i engaged with the work and viewed it it was more self-serving than beneficial to the people who i was serving so even if it's challenging in one area or another i want you to cross off anything that doesn't fit into both. Cross off anything that you wouldn't make a living off of and cross off anything that doesn't serve others as much as it serves you if you were to do it. And you might not even know this yet because you haven't done it yet and you haven't experienced it. Like I really thought that being a stylist would say, I'm sorry if I'm using myself as an example too much, but I, I really wanna give perspective because I thought that I was really going to be able to serve people and my perspective of it was that I was helping people to you know express themselves but it turned out most of the time people didn't really want to be super expressive they just wanted to feel comfortable in their clothes and so it didn't translate the way that I thought so this could be a reflective analysis or it could be a preemptive analysis hopefully y'all know what those words mean I'm just a really big words person <laughs> but anyways lastly finding your burden so Again, off of the remaining items on that list, hopefully it's narrowed down pretty well. Now you're going to try and apply it to your purpose and only the things that would pertain to your purpose. But before I break this down, how do you know your purpose? Purpose is not a physical thing. For example, your purpose can be directly pertaining to social justice, but it would not be directly pertaining to equality for the black community or equity for the black community. It wouldn't be specifically pertaining to the queer community. It wouldn't be pertaining to any specific identity. Instead, it would be having balance and power within society. And, you know, something more broad in general and something more deep on a spiritual level because ultimately the issue was never black and white. The issue was never man and woman or male and female. It was something deeper than that, something more spiritual than that. So you want to make sure that whatever you call your purpose is going to be something that's not so physical. And this is a whole separate process within the process, right? You really do want to try and narrow down, well, what is my purpose? What are the things that move me? What are the things that pull at my heart strings? And try and, and take a step back from that and look at, well, what is really happening in, the, in all these different areas that make me feel emotional and burdened and see what about it is spiritual and that's gonna be what your purpose is if you can really kind of identify that thing. And I tell you, God actually told me my burden through a dream and it was very chilling. Like I actually got chills from it every time I pictured it and I just literally just now, I felt it again. Every time I think about this, it troubles me. And I know I'm gonna feel like this for the rest of my life or until it's resolved, which is probably gonna to be towards the end of my life because it's what I was sent in this world to resolve, right? And it is related, directly related to all of the things that in my life bothered me. I'm not gonna really reveal what it is, but I just want you to have that perspective on it is that when you think about this thing, it's troubling you. Ooh, it hurts down to your bones and inside your bones and it might give you chills too. It's something that really troubles you. It's not just something that angers you. It's something that saddens you that grieves you. It's deep. It's not even something that you would really want to talk to people about because no one understands it like you do. But if you can try and figure out what that thing is for you, or even if you can't, 
it is necessary to try and incorporate that when looking for your calling because your calling is going to address this thing in its own unique way. The role that you will fill right now in your life is going to pertain to that thing in its own unique way. So looking back at that list, the only things that should remain on it are the things that you feel an unresolved pain regarding when you look at the issues in that specific area. So maybe you feel like you could become a judge and you might feel like your calling is to be a judge and the passion is that you love to bring order to situations. You love to analyze details. You love to study the law. Honestly, I don't know that much about judges, but I think that that's pretty much what they do. They determine what is right and what is wrong. And you have a deep sense of justice. Maybe you have an issue that you recognize that bad is looked at as good and good is looked at as bad and people are being judged and condemned for things they haven't done wrong and that troubles you and every time you think about it, it chills you. And you know that not only being a judge could be pertaining to this, but perhaps there are multiple things that you can do in your lifetime before becoming a judge that could help you to apply yourself to your purpose. Maybe you're on a scholarship committee and you're selecting your recipients for a scholarship because you think that certain people are overlooked in these scholarships and it's an injustice to them. So you want to be on the other end of the process to be able to contribute that different voice and perspective that's going to help underserved people to receive their scholarships and to be recognized for their good or, you know, I, I think that kind of sounds like it's related or connected and ultimately would contribute to what you would have to do as a judge later on in life. So yeah, when you've narrowed down this list, you should, I hope you have multiple things on your list, multiple passions left on your list that could arrange together to create multiple careers. And those careers would again be challenging to you they would be contributing to your purpose i know that that was not as straightforward clear cut and easily explained as it possibly could have been but i felt like i needed to kind of follow my stream of thought with that one it just kind of came out honestly i had notes and <laughs> i deviated very much because i think this is a really important topic and i think that we need to focus on the details a little bit more and take our time with this. This is not a one day process. None of it is. Whether you're taking the first route or the second route, whether you're trying to figure it out on your own or you're trying to seek God's answers, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take effort. It's going to take patience and it's going to take an open heart and a desire to receive and a desire to give as well. So that's it. That's all I got for you. If you like this video, then like it and I'll see you next time. Bye.